look kind of down, Ash. Huh? Have a donut. That always cheers me up. Pika Pika! These donuts are great. Jelly-filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut. So the first thing we're going to do is actually start with our rice. And for this, I'm going to be using about three cups worth of white short grain rice. And we're going to wash this about three times before adding in our water. Add in the appropriate amount of water for however much rice you're making. And we're going to take it... What are you doing with your finger? We're going to take it over to our rice steamer. Now, my rice steamer in particular has a really cool feature where you just hit a button and you make your really, really easy, delicious sushi rice. And it does this. Okay, rice steamer. Now we need to make the filling for these jelly donuts. And for that, we're gonna be using raspberries. Yes, this is where I'm going with this dish. We're gonna be using about 24 ounces worth of raspberries. Just make sure they're nice and rinsed and nice and cleaned. And then we're gonna to top this off with about a quarter cup worth of sugar. We wanna add in this sugar because it's gonna help break down the raspberries and release a lot of that liquid that they actually hold. This is also going to allow it to cook just a little bit better to actually make our jam. So we're gonna let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. After those 15 to 20 minutes, you can see some of that liquid start to leach. And this is what you're looking for when you're actually letting these raspberries macerate. Now take all of your berries, whatever berries you're using at this point, pop them into a sauce pot and we're going to add in another cup worth of sugar while very skillfully pouring in the other sugar. Give this a nice stir just to make sure that sugar coats each and every raspberry. You don't want too many clumps of raw sugar. Now bring this over to your stove and we're going to start cooking this over a nice low medium heat just to get everything going and start breaking down. We're going to cook it at this temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes until you really start to see some liquid form. You want this liquid to form because it is going to help cook those raspberries. Add in another cup worth of sugar, give this a stir, and that sugar is going to help start the jelly process. Now we're gonna throw in some fresh herbs and I'm using mint along with some fresh lemon juice to kind of give it that nice little pop that we're looking for. I'm just using one fresh lemon for this and about two sprigs worth of mint. And here is my hand stirring the jelly and you can't see because of my hand. There we go, that's, that's a little bit better. We wanna bring this to a nice hard simmer to where it's almost boiling. Now give this a taste just to see if you want it to be any sweeter or if you want any more lemon juice or any more mint or anything like that. We're gonna let this cook at a nice rapid simmer. Now here's a really cool trick. Take a frozen spoon, I place this in the freezer for about five to 10 minutes and take a little bit of your jam or jelly, place it directly onto that frozen spoon and this is gonna help solidify it fairly quickly. Pop it back into the freezer for about three to four minutes just to see the consistency of your jam or jelly. This is looking pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and start straining this. And yes, I do strain my raspberry jam or jelly because I don't like all that stuff in my teeth, you know? I don't wanna be fighting raspberry seeds for 45 minutes. But you can see even some of the stuff fresh off the pot is nice and jelly-like. Jelly-like? Gelatinous? Now this does take some time, but I really do feel like it's worth it. You want to make sure you press all of that really delicious jam straight through the sieve and try to get all of those seeds out of there because this is going to give it a really, really nice consistency. After you're done straining it, make sure you just give this a pretty quick stir just so all that's back together. Pour this into your jar of choice, just something that's a little bit heat proof. I'm just using a mason jar for this. And now we're going to let this cool overnight or for at least a few hours before you decide to use it. As it cools down, it's actually gonna give it that really beautiful consistency we're looking for. Now this has cooled overnight and you get to see what it looks like. And yes, I have been eating this, but I'm just gonna show it to you anyways. And look at that beautiful, beautiful texture. This is perfect. This is gonna spread so well, even though we're gonna stick it into a rice ball and uh, we're just gonna eat that. We don't need to see that. So now we have to make the quote unquote sushi vinegar. And for that, we're gonna be using, yes, powdered sugar. Why am I doing this? What is happening here? We're gonna need about a half cup worth of powdered sugar, followed to start with one tablespoon worth of half and half or milk. And the reason why I say half and half or milk is because you can really use either one, but you're looking for a certain consistency. This is a little bit too thick, so we're gonna constantly add just a touch of milk or half and half to this to get it to somewhat of a nicer, loose consistency. You want this to be really pourable. Now, once you're done, go ahead and wrap this in some plastic and keep it out at room temperature so it doesn't harden at all in the refrigerator. So now we're gonna get a little bit weird. And I know we did some weird stuff earlier, but we're gonna be making some chocolate sauce. And for this chocolate sauce, we're gonna need some really nice Dutch cocoa powder. This is a brand that I just had laying around, but we're gonna use about two tablespoons worth of Dutch cocoa powder, followed by about four tablespoons worth of sugar. I said four tablespoons worth of sugar. It's fine, just go with it. And then we're gonna hit this with one half cup worth of water. We're gonna bring this over the stove after stirring it up just a little bit to get all those flavors mingled. And we're gonna cook this over a very low medium heat before we add in secret ingredient, chemical X. 
Now our goal with this syrup is to just make sure that all those sugars are dissolving and just test for sweetness. We're gonna let this simmer just a little bit and watch it boil all over the stove because just don't walk away from this, you know, accidents happen. Now for secret ingredient chemical X, we're gonna be using agar powder. We're gonna need about one teaspoon worth of agar powder for this and that it's just gonna help solidify everything. This is actually really common in a lot of Japanese sweets and candies. Now agar does need heat to actually solidify. So we're gonna be cooking this for about four to five minutes just until you see it start to thicken up. And again, don't take your eyes off of it. Now, while that's going, we're gonna actually chop up a little bit of chocolate because I felt like this would be a nice little additional texture to this. So for this, we're gonna use about a quarter cup worth of dark chocolate chips. Just give this a nice rough chop with your knife. Don't put it in a blender because it might get a little bit weird, but just chopping it up with your knife is gonna be really, really nice for this. Pop all of your chocolate into a little side dish and we're gonna actually sprinkle this on top of your weird chocolatey concoction. This is what our chocolatey concoction starts to look like after it's been boiled for about those four to five minutes. It has thickened up pretty nicely. On a silicone mat, we're gonna actually pour this directly onto the mat and try to spread it out as evenly as possible. But just keep in mind that this does start to cool down and thicken very quickly. So you have to work very, very quickly with this. I used a offset spatula to kind of help out with that and then just sprinkle on your chocolate right on top of your chocolatey concoction and place this back into your refrigerator to cool down. And now it's finally time to make our weird sushi cream rice thing. We're only gonna use about half of the rice we had cooked because I realized it was quite a bit. So take out about two cups worth of your cooked rice and then we're gonna pour half of our frosting directly on top of that rice. This is just gonna get really, really, really weird. We're gonna start cutting the rice to incorporate all of that frosting directly into it, similar to how you would do sushi rice. Just keep in mind, you don't actually wanna make this in your hangiri if you do use one for sushi rice because we're introducing so much sugar and so many weird things into it that I wouldn't recommend using your hangiri. Just use a pan for this, it's gonna be fine. So as you cut your rice and you cool your rice and you cut your rice and you cool your rice, you're actually going to start developing this really beautiful shine due to the sugar starting to cool down on top of that rice. This is going to take about five to 10 minutes depending on how much rice you're using. I spent about five minutes on this just to start cooling it down, but you do wanna make sure this is at about room temperature before you stop working with it. Form this into a nice pile in that same pan, and then we're just gonna cover this with a little bit of plastic wrap just so it doesn't get weird and dried out. You don't really want that to happen. And this is pretty much good to go. Now to get our next thing ready, we're actually gonna be working with our chocolatey concoction with Chemical X. It's really satisfying to peel this off of the silicone and I will admit it did have this really interesting texture to it, but it's just like a sheet of plastic stuff. It's so weird. Go ahead and lay this down on your cutting board and we're gonna trim off the edges with a pizza cutter. It's just gonna be really easy to use this this way. And I kinda wanted to taste this, not gonna lie. And it just was, uh, it was a little, you know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't half bad. Now go ahead and trim off all the excess sides just so that way it's nice and squared up. And then we're gonna cut some strips out of this to emulate our nori. Yes, this is gonna be our nori sheeting and it's just gonna be, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know why we decided to do this. But we went ahead and cut four strips of this at about a half an inch and uh, now to assemble these. Okay, so I used this on a live stream last week and it just worked out so well that I decided to use my onigiri maker once again. Feel free to make these by hand, but we're gonna be using the onigiri maker for our Brock jelly donuts. God, this is just so... Make sure you have a little bit of water on hand to work with this rice so it doesn't stick too hard and grab a small handful of it and gently press it into your onigiri maker just about halfway up depending on what you're using and you wanna press this down, but don't press too hard because you can break the rice granules. Take the little nub thing contraption that they included with the onigiri maker. This is gonna make a nice hole for our jam. And now we're gonna be scooping this with a little bit of a portion scoop, but just feel free to use a spoon. I don't, I really didn't need to use a portion scoop for this. Put your little dab of raspberry mint jam right into the middle. Take another small handful of your rice, press it gently into the top part of your onigiri maker. And so that way you have this nice uniform shape. Pop this back out and place this right on top of the other half with the dimple side down to make a little cavity for your jam. Give this a full press with that top piece. And now we have this really perfect looking onigiri. Like it just came out so pretty. It was pressed beautifully. I love using this thing. Yes, it's kind of a cheat, but I mean, you can't deny that that looks perfect. This is truly troll worthy. Place this on a plate with a little bit of plastic wrap so it doesn't stick too hard to anything. And then we're gonna just go ahead and make the rest of these. We're gonna make about four with the rice that we had. And there is our onigiri stuffed with raspberry mint. Now we have to add our fake 
chocolate nori sheet. I cut this in half because it was just a little bit too long. Wrap this gently to press over the top of the rice so that way it sticks fairly well. And once you have that, you have your beautiful chocolate covered raspberry onigiri rice brock jelly donut. What is God, Paul? Go ahead and continue to make the rest of your brock jelly donuts. Place those on your plate and these are now good to go. I am honestly really freaking happy with how these look. <laughs> I mean, they kind of look like onigiri. I mean, jelly donuts, but I don't know how I feel. The chocolate looks really cool. It's just a, it's just a little weird. Okay, here we go. That's so good. That's delightful. Dude, this is really good. Look at the jelly. Look at it. Oh, what? I mean, the jam is really, really good. It's really refreshing. And the rice just tastes like a nice sweet rice. But then the chocolate, which I was hesitant about, actually give it this like really nice robustness to it. I guess it kind of just rounds everything out. But we have finally made Brock's actual jelly donut. I don't know. It was such a terrible translation. My name is Chef PK. Make sure you get subscribed and remember, Keep playing with your food. So I just tried to give some to Rachel and uh, I, I loved it. I thought it was delicious. Uh, she almost threw up, so. <laughs> uh,